P-O-D, or POD, as I call them. Mm -hmm. I don't. No. XFM 104.9, it's the Ricky Gervais Show. With Steve Merchant? Yeah. So Dermot O'Diddley- Yes. Three weeks and weeks, weeks and weeks in a row he doesn't even turn up, and now suddenly he's all over breakfast. I noticed, yeah, he's standing in for the breakfast show. Why weren't we asked to do that? Well, That's we were. Saying. Were we? Yeah. I didn't know about this. Yeah, but I don't want to get up that early, do I? Sure, sure. Uh, I feel a bit hungover today, actually. Do you? Yeah. What's happening? What, what, were you partying last night, were you? Well, not partying, we just went out, went out for a couple of drinks, then had a meal, and then went to the borderline and saw about- I'll tell you about that, it's good. You saw a band? That's the first yeah. time in years, isn't it? It is, yeah. Like yeah, because it knows- it, you know John Sim, the actor? Mm, not really. He's in this band, right, called Magic- Magic Alex, and it was really good, they're sort of like, sort of like a friendly oasis, they got, you know, sort of yeah, quite, yeah. M you know, it's quite mank sort of feel, but it's really good, good songs and everything. Is nice. he the singer? Yeah, no, he's the guitarist, nice yeah. cool. But, it was full of actors, cause it- cause it, right? and I felt quite tall. That's ludicrous, cause you're See, a very short man. Well I am, I'm sort of, um, I was average, but now I'm not, I don't think, mm. five or eight, that's right. But there, I was like quite- it was like Lilliput. <laughs> so I just, I just got to hang out at actors' <laughs> dudes. Well, all right, look, yeah. This is the reason, because act actors are often very quite handsome people, but yet they're always yeah, quite we obnoxious. Are, we are, we are, we are, we are. No, I mean, they're normally quite obnoxious for it. Again, you know, you're a good example <laughs> of that. <laughs> and yet, yet, I think it must be the small man complex, that's what makes them so obnoxious and so kind of desperate for attention. Didn't right. realise it before. Steady on. Because of course I tower above everyone. You do, don't you? I'm, uh, for people who don't know who are listening, I'm six foot seven inches tall. That's, 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 that's high. Yeah. That's and, big. and, and, um, for people who've never seen him, he doesn't hold it well. It's not like he's a sort of handsome athlete, is it, Carl? He's a bit of a, what, what do you call him? A t Carl, uh, don't answer. No, 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 no. Don't get drawn into that. No, no, you know, get, you, you know the game he's playing. No, 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 no. Do you know yesterday when you were in the office? Yeah. You did a little move. <laughs> and it reminded me of Blakey. <laughs> I oh, I hate you, Gervais. Oh, I hate you, Pilkington. That's his stance. Yeah, but even he was, he held it a little bit better, didn't he? Because he was a man, you know, mm -hmm. he had a big coat and everything, a peak cap. But, uh, yeah. I can't believe you. Like, I've not suffered enough from being freakishly tall. Now, two of my best buddies, yeah. live on radio, are just- It's not just the height, though, is it? It's the <laughs> posture and the face and everything. But it's got your places, oh. hasn't it? <laughs> no? What do you mean he's got me places? I think, I think people give you a bit more of a chance in, in your career and stuff, cause it's like... Oh. Well, yeah, stacking shelves. <laughs> cause I can reach to a high level. <laughs> Muse, plug in baby on XFM 104.9. Rick, Ricky Gervais, go on. Well, yeah, but I know you guys are laughing about the height thing, and, uh, for those that have only just tuned in, I am six foot seven inches tall, which is, which is tall and that's big, and I, you know, I pride myself on it in a way, you know, I've worked hard, I've not smoked, I <laughs> ate well, you know. Yeah. It's an accomplishment, but obviously I didn't have much involvement in it, I just am, and it's a curse because mainly the problem is that you, you can't get stuff, you can't get clothes, you can't get shoes, you know. Yeah. It's so, size 14 feet. Yeah, that's, but it is genuine, and I don't know, I mean, it costs a lot to buy a pair of size 14 shoes, and it, so I don't, I mean, if you're poor, if you were genuine genuinely poor, I don't know how you'd afford to be tall. Because the clothing costs more, everything costs more. I've, I've seen this in comics, that you'd, you'd actually go to school in a barrel. Wearing a barrel. With right. just braces, it'd yeah. just be a barrel like, and you'd have sort of flip-flops. Uh, <laughs> and you'd um, take a mule yeah. with you. They would have a mule, didn't they, the but poor people? But people always think like, it, that they, like you'll be in a pub or something, and people, I mean, people just think they can talk to you about it. They just think, oh, you're, you're, you're lanky, rah. It's just like, because it's like they But think, that really annoys you, doesn't it? Well, it annoys me because it's like they think I should be proud of it. Like well, exactly, but th they don't think that th this, th this is not a disadvantage. This is not a disability, is it? You're you're taller than most people. It might it get a disability. To, no, no, no. If you were if you were eight foot three, it'd be slightly disabilitating. You would, you know, but disabilitating. You, you're, you're, what disabilitating? <laughs> yeah. No, you're a medical man, aren't you? Eh? <laughs> but no, the point is, it's a disabilitating because <laughs> you go on public transport. Like if you're on a coach. Oh uh, yeah. You, the only place I can sit on a coach is that seat on the driver's lap. Either, either on the driver's lap or that seat at the very end. Yeah. You know where which is kind of which sits into the aisle. Yeah. That's the only place I can well, sit. Well, you st and stand up, some sort of stand at the back, waving at drivers. You could drive it from the back. <laughs> <laughs> Here he comes. Watch it. Yeah. Were, were you a tall baby? Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Merchant, uh, you've given birth to a basketball player. <laughs> Look at his dribble already. Were well, you a tall baby? Babies aren't tall. Oh, what, right. at what point did did you suddenly like Jesus? Nothing fits me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't happen overnight. Carl. Let's do a little graph. How tall were you at five? Oh, I don't know. Three foot. Three foot. How tall were you at twelve? Six foot. 
Six. <laughs> what are you in? I don't know, do I? How do I remember? I don't remember this. Well, when did teachers start calling you freak boy and really, lanky? They didn't. They was, it wasn't didn't they? so much. It was, no. You went to a funny school. <laughs> I went bowling with him once. Well, I'd never been bowling before, and he'd been once before, and he went, let's go to this bowl. We went to a bowling alley, right? And, um, you have to wear these special shoes. Now, they're, they're sort of like pointed things anyway, and they're, um, multicolored, sort of red and green. Like, they look pretty weird. And, uh, and the woman said to me, oh, what size are you? I said, oh, eight. She went, yeah. She went, what size are you? She went, 14. She went, 14. He went, you probably haven't got them. He goes, she goes, yeah, I think we have got one pair. And she put them on the table and it was like Krusty the Clown. And I just started laughing. They looked so long and he had to run around this bowling alley in these freaky clown shoes. Yeah, but they don't look freaky clown like when I'm wearing them because the rest of me is in proportion to it. It looks like a little wall bracket. The one of the worst the thing, one of the worst things that happened to me was when I was like, I don't know, when I was about 16 or something, we went to, um, it's a fire uh, alarm. There's a fire alarm going off. There's a fire alarm going off. And the off fire the light's going off. Yeah. Should, should, should we not just should maybe play a record it. and go and check that out? Wrap it up if you want. Oh, no. No, not wrap it up. Play a record. I'm gonna go. No, the See fire has gone off, Rick. It's gone off. Oh! What if it might have burned down? Yeah, I think we'd know about it. The flames licking around our ankles would be a clue. God. I'm gonna go and investigate. Oh, you shouldn't ignore the fire alarm. Ah! Blimey! Yeah, look, look, We're entertaining oh, the look. nation. Oh, look at him. He's scared of fire. Ah! What do you mean? <laughs> Mercury Rev. The dark is rising. That's a good song, isn't it? I noticed that your, um, investigating the fire mainly involved wandering out into the office, looking around a bit, then coming back. Yeah. What did you find out? There was no fire. There was no fire? No. Right. right. But I love <laughs> Imagine that though. Imagine that like, there's a fire and there's loads of firemen and they go get back and you go to the fireman. Oh, get back! <laughs> oh, look at him! I would. Back. I would. I'd actually yeah. justify to. Okay, there's heavy shelling, lads. Retreat. Oh, black <laughs> sarge. I'm sorry, <laughs> black sarge. Yeah. Just there was a fire. Like, I'd never seen it before. A fire thing going off. There was a fire on there. I thought, oh, let's at least have a look if there's a fire. That's all I thought. See, there's some official coming in now to tell us we should have been running out. There's no fire. Yeah, well, you can't just stop entertaining, you know, the people of London just because there's a fire. This isn't the Titanic. <laughs> oh, true. I don't have to carry on playing. I don't I, know. It feels I, like a bit of a sinking ship, really. <laughs> <laughs> right. Nice one. Oh, nice one. I don't know who oh. I'm taking off then. Probably me. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, listen, let me just tell you briefly this. This is a, another example of, of how people can just exploit you and make fun of you when you're tall. Yeah. Um, I was quite tall. I've always been like about six foot seven for quite a while now. And when I was about sixteen, um, I went to a, a big New Year's celebration in Bristol, where I come from. And they, everyone kind of congregates in this big sort of part of town, and there's all people dancing around, like in Trafalgar Square. And um, I was there, and I, somehow I sort of, I just picked up a balloon somewhere along the line, one of those kind of helium sort of balloons, and I was holding that, sort of dancing around. And um, these two girls came up to me, and I was thinking, yeah, okay, you know, it's New Year's Eve, brilliant, you know, that's, uh, that's the, my kind of party. Yeah. And they came up, and they went, hey. Once a year. And they went, <laughs> they said. Uh, you gonna be here for long? And I went, well, maybe. And they said, it's just that we've arranged to meet back at you <laughs> in about an hour. I went, what do you mean? I went, well, it's just because we can see you wherever you are. <laughs> Don't worry, you can move around and stuff. We'll see you with the balloon. Just arrange uh, to meet some friends. I here. love that. A landmark. So, like, so pilots use that. Oh, we're just coming in. Uh, there's, uh, we'll be, uh, uh, when we see Steve Merchant, we'll be <laughs> descending to Bristol Temple Mead. <laughs> What's really funny is New Year's Eve, Trafalgar Square, you've got a huge column, but the use yeah. Steve is like the meeting point. Steve's got a huge funny. column. Brilliant, Rick. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Award-winning comedy from Ricky Gervais. Happy Monday. T took you back, didn't it? Happy Mondays there, Manxy. Now, Carl's, like, really getting down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, come on. Got come any on. Vera's? Oh, come on, Mel. Ah. Uh, did it take you back, did it? Yeah. How old are you? Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. So you were- oh, you were just going into- uh, out of your teens. I'm a Virgo. No. What? No. Yeah. That- that- no, you don't understand. It's just uh, I'm Rick, a Virgo. I thought we discussed about involving <laughs> Carl. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. The management have told us we're just not allowed to. Do it. <laughs> We've had emails from yeah. people. Please don't it's, speak to Carl. It's cruel. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm a cusp. Can I just Virgo. make an appeal? I don't want to. I'm a cusp. <laughs> the Virgo. <laughs> he said. Still going through with it. Doesn't know what's going on, does he? <laughs> just wave bright objects at him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, we've got a competition this, Steve. We have, but before we mention that, can I just ask something? I don't want to exploit our position on the radio. No. But I wonder, because I'm very tall, and it's very tricky for me to get size 14 shoes and big clothes and stuff, could I just get people to send some stuff if, if like, maybe they own a shop which Yeah, but it'd be, it'd stuff? be things like homemade clogs That's that people cool. have carved out of chunks of wood they found That's in whatever. the shed. Whatever. It's not well, going to be great. When I was in America, uh, everyone says to me, oh, you go to America. It is a cacool. I'm out of my own skin. <laughs> 
Um, when I was in America, everyone told me that it would be, re you know, really easy to get big clothes and big shoes and that because they're all huge and all freaks over there. Oh, right, oh, right, oh, I steady on. And I was wandering around New York and I was going in a few shops, kind of saying, you know, we've got size 14, US 15 shoes, and they were going, no, they, we want some. <laughs> Is that the difference? Yeah. One. And they literally were laughing at me. There was a couple of shops where they literally laugh and get, like, someone else in and come and look at the tall, freaky Englishman. Really? And then one guy said, oh, I remember we had someone come in here once and he said he'd been to a shop which sold kind of stuff for really tall people and, and, um, and he said, I think I can remember the address, and he sort of looked at the, the sort of telephone direction, he made a note of it. And I went on the subway, and I went through all the Lily put. And I, li I went, cause it took me ages to get there, really hard to find it. I finally went in there, I've never seen it. It was heaving, right, with freaks. It really? Was amazing. They were, it was like, they were just kind of gargoyles, it was like something from Lord of the Rings. They were just kind of these tall people and kind of gnarled. Did they turn around and start bowing to you? It was incredible. Yeah. And I went in and I just said, hi, I'm looking for a kind of da 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 sort of thing. The guy went, yeah, sure, and he sort of hobbled off into the darkness and came back with exactly the kind of pair of shoes I wanted. I couldn't believe my luck. It might be a magic shop. But it was like, it was like that shop in, um, Mr. Ben. It might have been a dream though, you yeah. see. <laughs> Did you, have you still actually got the shoes? No. Because when Mr. Ben sort of like, goes back and wakes up next day, he finds like a feather in his pocket where he remembers he, he was a, you know, a 17th century sort of squire or something, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Ah, <laughs> uh, the classic episode of Feast of Pen when he becomes <laughs> a 17th century <laughs> squire. Oh, <laughs> uh, 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 dear. Mr. Ben learns to play the harpsichord. But, uh, it's uh, like, when Mr. Ben, that, that black shopkeeper goes, right, are you gonna pay for that? You're, yeah. not, you're not just gonna go yeah. through that door and then have an adventure and come back, oh, yeah, I am. <laughs> no, you're not, you're barred. Yeah. You just make me sick, we, we wait nothing from you. <laughs> Well, I'm not in this for your amusement, Mr. Ben. Is it only Ben who's got the insider knowledge about the magical doorway, or...? I don't know, because that, that fella in the fez doesn't seem to have anyone else there. No, rarely. He's always grinning, though. He knows yeah. something. I, I'm not sure. Uh, it's not a documentary, though, is it? It's a, it's, <laughs> it's a kid show, isn't it? I can't remember. No, it's um, not. It's just a kid show, so anything sure. can happen. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot of people make that mistake sure. when they slag off something like Scooby Doo or oh. Thundercats. It's not not really no, reality. Real. It's just a kid. Well, Mr. Ben, they were all on drugs, weren't they? Like Magic Roundabout. My mate <laughs> fancied Cheetera from Thundercats. I Cheetera. Um, Which one was Cheetera? I quite like She Was. She was. She was the lovely. She was a lovely cat. Yeah, she was a real dish. What's the what's the what's the sexiest cartoon? Uh, I'm glad you've asked. Um, a lot of people say Jessica Rabbit. They do, and they'd be right to say that because she's actually human. She's not an animal, which is good. What? Isn't she? No, no. She's she's a normal woman married to a rabbit. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, she's yeah, not. She's, yeah, Jessica Rabbit. Is that what she got a surname, Rabbit? But yeah, she's not actually. She's a rabbit. married Roger Rabbit, but she's not actually a rabbit. She's a glamorous woman. Is she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah, never yeah. seen it. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the weird thing about it. That's weird, though, isn't it? It is weird. The idea of a rabbit having sex with a beautiful woman. That, that is the weirdest thing about it. How does that make you feel? Annoyed, <laughs> if I'm honest. Yeah. But I bought some bunny ears just after I saw the film. Oh, hip hop. You got your hip hop Oh track. yeah, good. No, 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 um, this album was uh, rated by a lot of people last year. Uh, my sources tell me that it's being re-released and re-recorded this yeah. year. Anyway, Nerd are the outfit. Uh, they're better known as the Neptunes, who are kind sure. of, uh, sort of hip hop R&B producers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I think yeah, this yeah, track yeah, may yeah. have featured on a giveaway CD. It did! The NME. It did! Anyway, it's Dynamite. It's from the album In Search Of by Nerd, and it's Bobby James. Play it. Nerd from the album In Search Of, and that's Bobby James. It's brilliant. It's great. It's, it's really bit. It reminds me a little bit of, um, Warren G, that, that chorus. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And apparently the album, uh, I don't, it's, it was on kind of limited release, so it's quite tricky to get hold of, but as I say, I think they're re-releasing it. Well, you should tape off the radio, because we're doing yeah. lots of features. Yeah, no, I'll maybe play that again in the future, just tape it off. I'll tell you what, I'll play the whole album over the course of the like, next couple of weeks. Yeah, and we'll just tell you, I mean, you know, we're what we've got enough is talking, we just go now and you I mean, can press play and record. I mean, we can't actually say, we can't advocate you tape off the radio because that's breaking No, or maybe I'll just do some bootlegs of the, you know, the yeah. car, I can just well, sell so yeah, them Camden Market you know, for yeah. four quid. <laughs> exactly, fine. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we won't, I mean, we, you know, we shouldn't Who's, really say that, but... Warren G is, um, Dr. Dre's cousin, is he, or something? Is he, is... is Warren that G, what? I think, is his cousin, yeah. But I, I know he's got a famous brother as well, and I found, I, I think it's something like Nate Dogg. It could well be Nate Dogg. We could maybe someone would know that and could yeah. email you, or phone you, in. Yeah, or email maybe kind of. This is the truth. best thing about being on the um, radio. I can I can think of something. There was a competition right on Virgin, right? I was listening. Virgin, I think one oh five point. No, what is it? Oh, I, I can't know. remember. Yeah. Um, good station. Good, good station. Yeah. Good station. Um, and they had a competition right, and it was to win a trip to America for the on the Enterprise. It was all about space. And there was one there was one question I had to answer three right, and it was who was the first one into space? Yuri Gagarin. Um, it was doing a, and then the third question was, um, how, how much bigger than the moon is the sun? Is it twice as big or four times as big? And this one went four times as big, went correct. It's not. It's hundreds it's of times bigger. A lot more bigger. I can't yeah. believe, uh, can someone look that up on the internet and how many times bigger is the sun than the moon? It's not four times. It's, it's huge. It's like beach ball to a pea type dimensions. Which DJ was oh. it, do you remember, on Virgin? I 
Can't remember, but it was the one on sort of about eleven o'clock. Oh, 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 Wouldn't want to be him. Um, yeah, he's embarrassed himself, isn't he? Himself. Well, F- we do quizzes. We never get anything wrong. That's true. Enough. During that track, I'm I'm chilling out. I'm loving it, aren't yeah. I? Carl goes, "Do you know how baguettes came about?" <laughs> do you know how baguettes come about? I went, "Go on," and Steve went, "No, save it." Wait a minute, though. I'm thinking, Rick. People are going to be desperate to know the answer to that. Why don't we play some uh, ads and some music and stuff? It's like a cliffhanger. Exactly. How? Did be- baguettes come about? Whatever he says is gonna be good, Stay isn't it? Stay tuned to XFM to find out. Hives, hate to say I've told you so, so I love that sort of stuff. Mm. That and the strokes. Well, it's so much better than this new metal rubbish, isn't it? Definitely. Now, most people think we talk rubbish on air. Yep. If they could hear the conversations Off that there. go on, I know, that, um, someone just emailed in saying the sun is indeed about 400 times bigger than the moon, thanks for that. Uh, uh, that, that DJ must have looked up and said, um, 400 times, that can't be right, it's probably, they probably, it's probably printing error four times. <laughs> yeah. Nothing can be 400 times <laughs> bigger than the moon. Um, Carl went, yeah, but uh, the sun, it's only got a million years, isn't it? I went, what? He went, on that space program, it said that in a million years the sun will be destroyed, and he said, and then we're all shafted. <laughs> Right? I went, <laughs> I laughed. Steve went, no, it's okay. By then, we'll be on another planet. <laughs> no, I think that's yeah. true. We'll have colonized right. another planet. Right. Carl went, yeah, but there'd be no sun. Steve went, well, there's other suns, which is true. Carl went, well. I went, well, yeah, ev- every star is a sun. Carl went, mm, well, not, not really. <laughs> Not really. Don't, don't believe that, <laughs> do you? And I went, no, it is. The sun is just a star. It's not even particularly a big star. Carl went, well, why didn't they say that instead of worrying me? <laughs> instead of worrying me. In a million years' time. Yeah. I love yeah. that Carl, he's been preserved, brought back to life, <laughs> and he's now the ruler of the world. Just a head in yeah. a fish tank. <laughs> and he speaks like this. I am Pilkington. <laughs> so the reason, the reason you became king of the universe, of course, is because of your fascinating French bread anecdote. Oh yeah, yeah. What come on the then. What? Well, how? Uh, how did baguettes come about? If this is going to be someone uh, cooked a loaf a bit wrong and said oh, I can still make a sandwich out of it, <laughs> I'm going to hit you. No, 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 no. Go on then. Um, right, Napoleon, when he was at war and that with um, Russia. Uh-huh. <laughs> 1812, yeah. Yeah, all his soldiers were like, you know, not used to the cold weather and that. <laughs> so they said, take te- some clothes in your bag with you because it's going to be, uh, gonna be nippy, nippy yeah. out there. So, um, they put all the clothes in the bag. Sure. Do they were told. Thought, oh, it's Napoleon, for Christ's sake. No I'm room for any food. No room for You're anything. joking. So, um, Could they make some sort of like sandwich? <laughs> no, it won't fit because of all the clothes. You have to take extra yeah. gear. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> so, um, anyway, he said, I can see where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be is there a baguette-shaped gap <laughs> left in their holdall? <laughs> they thought, let's make some bread that you can fit down your trouser leg. What? That's not true. <laughs> That's <laughs> no, it's not true. I read it in Euston train station. I was waiting to go back to Manchester. Where did you read these? Scrawled on the wall in graffiti. No, no, no. Yeah. Do you know the upper- was it also <laughs> meet me here for cock fun <laughs> at twelve o'clock? <laughs> the upper cross sandwich <laughs> shop, Euston station. It's on the wall. What do you mean it's on the wall? Do you know how it says like, <laughs> sail on at Dixon's, whatever? Yeah. Next to that there was like a bit of information, once you've read the stuff on Dixon's- Baguette okay, information. There was, there was a big thing about <laughs> history of the baguette. I read <laughs> it and I thought, ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we, 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 got, we got to make a sandwich we can spit down our trouser leg. <sighs> But how can you march and fight with a huge piece of bread down your train? Although it would be intimidating, you see them coming, you go, sacra bleu, look at the size <laughs> yeah. of them. They're, they're, they're big fellas. Well, oh, blimey. I, I, I can't help but feel that could be a practical joke at your expense. Yeah. You do that. Well, the Earl of Sandwich- Do you sandwich, ever question anything the, you read? If it's that, printed up, is that, yeah. like, fact for you then? Well, it's not funny. I mean, if they were trying to be funny, it's like, oof, <laughs> it's not, is it? So it's information. Have you heard us? Things sometimes want to be funny that's, when that's, they're not. That's exactly what happened with the sandwich. The Earl of Sandwich wanted somebody who could fit down his pants. <laughs> and uh, it was a, those triangle cut sandwiches wrapped in cling film were perfect. Uh, um, you might be right. You might be right. I am. Because the cordage past is so they could drop it down the mines, isn't it? Is it? They, yeah, they wrapped it up in a, they wrapped up like meat and vegetables in pastry. And they sort of crimped it and it was like a little, and they dropped it down the mines, so. Yeah, that's how that came about. And bagels were originally made so that people could play hoopla, <laughs> but then <laughs> eat afterwards. Yeah. I don't know if you're aware of that. <laughs> that is true. Carl. Well, this anyway. Is call my bluff. Is yeah. that all true? Yeah. They're well, all true. They're all true. Yeah. Yeah. Tell your well, kids that when you have them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if they're still alive in a million years. <laughs> well, go ahead. it might be true. Can someone confirm um, that baguette fact that it was so Napoleon could stick it? Down not him. his trousers. Not him, his no, soldiers. His men. 
Yeah. Fascinating information. Fascinating bread information, Carl. Radiohead. Yeah, now this is my song for the lovers. It's a beautiful track. It's let down, uh, off OK Computer. It's one of my favourite Radiohead tracks. It's lovely. Right, set the tape going now, if you want to tape, yeah. you know, these songs. Avalanches, Frontier, Psychiatrist. Absolutely. Well, we've had lots of emails. Um, people, obviously, we inflamed, uh, and provoked well, actually, about the, the, the Cornish really. pasty. Um, I've got a couple of amendments to that. The, the crusty bit, you know, is actually as a handle, because obviously the mines had dirty hands, and they'd eat the, all the stuff in the pasty, and they'd be left with this sort of crust, and they could throw that away. Mm -hmm. Also, someone told us that at one end was, a, like, apple, mm -hmm. so you have a little sweet as well. A little dessert. So, there you go. You noticed how, like, over the years we've been doing this, you know, way mm. back when we started XFM, no one ever contributes when we ask about the music, when no. we ask about hip hop, no. or their, you know, opinions on that, anything no. important. No. But, start talking about pasties, yeah. we've had about five phone calls. Yeah. And like, someone, <laughs> someone phoned up to confirm, they used to work for Upper Crust, and, uh, basically, Carl got all excited. So, uh, so it is true, she went, well, I don't know if it's true, I've, I've read the same sign you yeah. did, Carl. Interestingly, it, there's an email here that says, uh, which basically offers a history of the baguette, yeah. and, uh, talks about after the revolution, the government decreed that all of France must eat the same bread. And it was up to the bakers to bake this bread of equality. Mm. Um, and then Napoleon kind of, um, made sure it was a particular, he kind of set in, in Yeah, in, in, obviously on the bread you can eat anything you find in the garden. Mm. Frogs, snails, bits of horse, but squid. The interesting, th the interesting thing is, Rick, that there's no mention of sticking it down your trousers whilst going to war. The French have tried to keep that secret for <laughs> over a hundred years, it was Steve. It only upper crust, people. Yeah, things, yeah, yeah, nearly, nearly yeah, 200 yeah. years, that is a top secret. Somehow Euston Station upper crust got hold of a document, <laughs> left behind in an old sea chest, possibly Napoleon's, could have been Josephine's. Unfortunately, jotted it down. He's kicking himself now. Oh, Sekla, I cannot believe I left a note. <laughs> if he talked like that. He did. He did, he did that, yeah, yeah, he talked English, exactly. but in a very funny <laughs> French exactly. accent. Do you remember, there was one thing that, talking about funny French accents, do you remember, you remember Allo Allo? Yeah. Remember, it was on about five o'clock in the afternoon, but they still made, because it was a funny Frenchman, it was that, that English guy who was posing as a French police yeah. officer. it's very complicated He would often walk by, and he, I remember there was one where he said, uh, I was pissing by the door when I heard a shit. Oh yeah. Now that's passing by the say door. That. I'm allowed passing to say that. by the door when I heard a shot. That's what he's saying. I'm allowed yeah. to say that at two o'clock because that I'm just saying I'm talking in a French accent. Yeah. I was pissing by the door when I heard a shit. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Because I'm speaking French, Carl. Do, do, you, do, you know, do you know what I mean? That's the rule. Do you know why people tinkle the tink the glasses before they have a drink? Why they tink? The verb to tink. I do know that, Carl. Is it about poison? It is. Here we are. What would it make a different noise? Oh. Nope. Brilliant. <laughs> Go on, explain Why? it. Why? You explain it, Steve. No, 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 don't Steve, you explain it, Carl. <laughs> Go on, oh, I've started so I'll finish. Go on, Carl, explain why they tink the glasses. Ages ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> only people with money had drinking or something. <laughs> That's not one of my film reviews! <laughs> Years ago. Welcome to History Now. Now, ages ago, only people with money had drinking or something. Keep going, Carl. Keep going. Like spirit and stuff, so yeah. they'd, um, it's, it's like businessmen, business, businessmen. It's <laughs> easy for you to say. <laughs> this is getting to be cruel, cool, isn't it? This is amazing. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Why go did on. you open your mouth, Carl? <laughs> what were you hoping was the best that could happen? Because you're trying to make me look stupid before with the planet, so I'm- Where is you now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on, though, come on. Biz- bi bi businessmen. <laughs> businessmen, no, businessmen with money, I've got to drink and ching. Okay, so then, we'll so they'd, drink. So they'd, so they'd nip round to have a chat about the, whatever they're earning money with. <laughs> and they'd say, right, do you want a drink, then? And yeah. they'd go, oh, yeah, that'd be alright. Yeah. So, yeah. rather than, like, um, just pouring it out of a bottle into a glass and saying, there you go, it, it could be going, hang on a minute, it could be poisoning me here and trying to, like, nick me business idea. Yeah. yeah. So what they'd do, it, it sort of pour a bit of his drink into the other person's glass and you get that tink noise and that's like, like, cheers, you know. No, 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 Carl, I, I just have a slight amendment there. I think what it was was you're absolutely right that they would then test each yeah. other's drinks to see that, show that it wasn't poison, but over the years that was reduced to just chinking the glasses by way of saying let's not actually bother going through the whole rigmarole. Mm. They just did the yeah. chinking of the glasses. Yeah, right, kind of I, 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 yeah, that's, that's, that's good. <sighs> it was exhausting though, wasn't it? I know. Was it worth it, do you think? Well, I, I like that, because people carry that with them, though. When they do that, they think, oh, that bloke's definitely not trying to poison me. Yeah. So the, the horrible thing is that now, 
when they do the glasses, I can laugh and go, they don't know I've poisoned them. <laughs> exactly. You should always do the pouring back and forth. It's a shortcut, it's a slippery slope, you know, just be careful. Ash, there's a star. One of my bands of 2001, Ash. Was it? Yeah, they've come through. I didn't like them at first, thought, uh, you know, a bit, a bit too lo-fi, but I think they've, good, yeah. they've worked at it, they do good songs, they're good performers, and I think they're probably thoroughly nice chaps. Sure. All right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We didn't say hello because we were away for a couple of weeks. We didn't come back and go, oh, we're back, did we? It's like nothing ever happened. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Did um, you have a good Christmas? Yeah, you? Yep. Yeah. Carl? Yeah, it's all right. Lovely. Okay, let's crack on. Good. My, um, I went on holiday after Christmas, yeah. Yeah. And, um, so did uh, our mutual friend, Phil Belker. Yeah, good man. He, 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 he was in Lanzarote and he told me one of the funny, I don't know if I can tell this on the radio, I'll have to say the C word, I'll just go, it's in a sentence, so I just go, you, C, when it comes, and you'll know that he's saying the sure. terrible word. Um, just, you know, didn't want to ruin the anecdote. Anyway, uh, they're walking along one evening in Anzarote, and there's lots of Brits there, apparently, and Phil overhears, uh, a sort of a married couple arguing. They're having to go home a bit early. And she's saying to him, she went, for Christ's sake, every time we come out drinking, you always shit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> right? Wow. Always. Not once. So he's going, ah, oh, I've told you, he said, it's not the drink, it's the weather. She went, the weather. You'll be blaming the food next, you see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they should have oh. got married. Wow. Or mate, when did you think the shit in yourself started? Must have been after the marriage, because if it, it they, you know, you're caught in, and you go, like, went out with that. Uh, uh, Derek again, did you ask that? Yeah, how was it? It was, the evening was lovely, the meals must be shot himself. <laughs> again. <laughs> that's, that's five dates, five different heaps of shit. But I think I can change him. I think I can change him, yeah. It must have happened after the marrying. Or he just might have think, oh god, I've got, or he's got to the age where he think, look, I'll just empty it when I get home. Yeah. I'm not gonna keep going up and going to the toilet, you know. It's the ice that does it. Yeah, Carl is right, I think. It is the ice. What do you mean? People forget, you know, they say, oh, don't, don't drink the water when you're on holiday, and they, and they don't, they drink, you know, they buy heavy on and stuff. Oh, I see. They forget about the ice. The ice cubes, you're right in a bar. Made from tap water. And that can do it, can it? Yeah. But what but, did she, what, she what, said what, every what, time you're I drinking, didn't she? I assume that she wasn't drinking ice then. Yeah. Well, what, what, I mean, why is it just having to do Let's be honest, everyone that goes on holiday doesn't end up crapping themselves. Yeah, yeah, they usually make it to a it, toilet. He does it every time he drinks, doesn't he? Yeah, well, apparently. Just don't let him carry the baguettes. <laughs> 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 ah, he's good, isn't he? Oh, Carl comes out with something. He does now and again, doesn't he? Carl, that was sweet, man. That yeah, sweet. nice one. Yeah, respect you. Right, we've got another feature now. Yes, this is a feature which we introduced before Christmas, and it was so popular, we brought it into 2002 <laughs> as well. Yeah. And it's we've carried it over with us. It's, it's an interesting thing. And I don't think, I don't think we'll ever run out of features for yeah, it. I don't think so. Go on, then what's the feature called, Steve? It's brilliantly, it's rather brilliantly called A Song That I Like. Yeah. And in it, let me explain. Go on, go game. on. What I do is, in it, I play a song. What, that um, you like, or? That I like. Oh, right, yeah. so you just pick a few, oh, well, hmm, let me go, I'm gonna explain this. All the songs, right, there are, Carl, Steve likes some of them, he doesn't like others. Exactly. But, for this particular feature, the only songs that will be in this section will be the ones that he likes. If you think you're gonna hear songs that I don't like, you're wrong, Carl. <laughs> let me clear that up straight away. Yeah. Songs that I like. What song have you chosen to play? Thank you very much for asking. I have chosen, and it's something I've only been introduced to recently, but I did enjoy it, and it seemed, um, you know, c just felt contemporary. It's, uh, pa Patti Smith and the classic Gloria. Oh, fantastic. Play Gloria by Patti Smith. Did you enjoy that? Yeah, I love it. I've, 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 I've always been one of my favourite tracks. And as Carl pointed out, sounds remarkably like, uh, who did you mention? PJ, PJ Harvey. Harvey. Oh, yeah, well, well, yeah, everyone knew that. that she was obviously very influenced by her. Uh, that's fine, that's fine. That's all right, yeah. that's allowed. That's, that's cool. I like PJ Harvey too. Exactly. There's enough room for two. You're absolutely right. <sighs> oh, here we let's are just, then. Let's just take a moment to think about what we've done, you know? <laughs> yeah, well it's been good, it's yeah, uh, we've enjoyed it's, it's an hour and twenty minutes, we've, we've, we've talked about, um, oh, shit in yourself. <laughs> we talked about pasties. We've done, done pasties, we've done pasties. A, a number of pastries, actually. Um, we did never got the, um, we should go in a competition, who's the, who's the, um, tastiest cartoon ever. Well, actually, I threw up g Terra. I threw up, um, Jessica Rabbit. I've had some people contribute here on, on email. Um, we've got someone here, Dom has, uh, emailed us. He's told us that, uh, for him, Daphne from Scooby-Doo. Yeah, popular, popular choice, popular and choice. And obviously this is one I've, uh, I've never quite understood, Wilma from the Flintstones. <laughs> I've actually always felt that Wilma, I don't know, I just thought she was a bit- No, not a bit Wilma, Betty, surely. Yeah, yeah, Betty. Well, this is what I mean, Wilma, I mean, yeah, Betty, surely, but Wilma. 
he's just quite homely. Come on, Steve, you wouldn't say no to Wilma. No, I suppose not. If it was on, I'd be worried about Fred if he found out. <laughs> I would, well, I'd hate to do it, you know. I don't want to do it to Fred, he's a good guy. He is, isn't he? Yeah, he's a bit of a jump. Whereas, where, whereas Barney, to be honest, I don't yeah. think he deserves Betty. Do they both work in the quarry? <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, let's be honest, Fred, not a smart man. I mean, he also uh, didn't come out of, uh, of rock school with anything other than a couple of basic O-levels. I he know, but he's a hard, he's, he's, you know, he's a hard-working sound sort of but guy. they got a big house, they got like a TV, they got that bird thing. Yeah. They I mean, I, I, be honest, if I was Fred, I would be a little bit disappointed that my kid does nothing, whereas Barnes can lift up sort of tall buildings. Sure. Bam, bam. He's yeah, a very yeah. strong, you know. I mean, interesting me, <laughs> um, Fred loves his job. He's always yabba-dabba doing at the end of the day. <laughs> he does yabba-dabba. He's yabba the whole day lifting rocks from one place to another. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't take that from that cat, though. <laughs> I would If a cat picked me up by the scruff neck and put me out, yeah. right, on the doorstep, I'd right. go mental, I'd get rid of it. Get it rid is of a saber toothed tiger though, Carl, so it could rip him to shreds. It's not like a normal domestic cat you have nowadays. You know when they go to the drive in at the beginning? Yeah. And they order um, maybe some ribs. Yeah, that huge, that huge rib and it tips yeah. the car over. Yeah. Was that her first day on the job? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's I got, never been ordered before. Yeah, or, I always she'd have realised. Or, she'd have realized or that, yeah, we're out of pig. We, we've got brontosaurus rib. Exactly. And he goes, won't that knock the car over? <laughs> no, it won't. I don't know. Rick, can I tell you now? That was an accident waiting to happen. It was really, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah and it did. Oh dear, mind you, I had a. I went in te to Texas once, and I had some ribs, and it was like the Flintstones. It was huge, and not only did it look too much like an animal that I couldn't actually eat it. I don't know who could eat it. I mean, seriously, it was two foot long. Yeah, and all the rib. It was like half a rib cage. And I it is just incredible. My friends were lived in Texas for a while, and they uh, they once were in a kind of diner, and there was um you know those kind of benches that are attached to the table the ta yeah. itself, like a kind of picnic bench. Yeah. And uh, this huge fat guy came in, he came wobbling, and he ordered like this kind of everything you can eat meal, and his fat kind of sort of you know it kind his of his big uh, fatty itself. fatty fatness fatted yeah, on it, the fat table. It yeah. Ratted, it wrapped itself around the uh, table and everything. Oh, he was God. chowing down, and when he tried to leave, the table came up with him. Oh no! no. Imagine that. I mean, they are fat, aren't they? They're big people. They're huge people. But it was that thing we talked about like, before, that um, uh, bloke on Jerry Springer stone, who was like 80 stone, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I felt quite sorry for him. He was really sad and he was crying. It is rad, but my point is this, right? When he got to, say, 50 stones, sure. didn't he go, that's too much that's gonna be enough for it? For a land animal. <laughs> exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's big, isn't it? I mean, I, I, I'm getting worried. I'm 13 stone and I am genuinely getting worried. I'm thinking, oh, Yeah, God. when you've got that big, when you've actually got your own mare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, you have, when you have to get in helpers to, to w look what the scale says. Yeah. Like they get four or five people lift up your belly and go, it's 52 stone. You go, that's too much. <laughs> exactly. That's too, I'm going to only have nine breakfasts When you actually, today. when you begin to appear on the ordnance survey map. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. When You've you got your own symbol. It's like, we can see two things from space now, Fatty and Steve Merchant. <laughs> we'll be landing right, right about. Well, well no, I'm just saying, you're not fat, are you? Freakish and big. Just it's, another quick thought. They, someone's mentioned Daphne from Scooby-Doo, and I've, yeah. but I've always had a soft spot for Velma. Velma. Because Velma's oh, no. in glasses. I mean, I'd have, I'd have She's had- She's clever. Can I tell you what would have happened if I was in that environment? I was maybe on the- Your glasses would have got tangled no, up. No, I'd have always had an art- I'd always be making a play for Daphne, right? And I- Velma would have fancied me, but yeah. I'd have always ignored it because I was playing for Daphne. And then when I finally realised it was never gonna happen with Daphne, I'd have blown it with Velma. Maybe That's not though. Maybe not. Maybe not. Sometimes those, you know, they, they might, you know, appreciate honesty and go, listen, I've been hitting on the good looking one. <laughs> Oi, oi, four eyes. Yeah. Do you fancy it, Chubbs? <laughs> exactly. Something like that. Just being honest is what you're saying. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm wondering, I don't mean to be libelous, but Velma, she was quite short, the glasses, the short hair. Lesbian. Hung around with the dog and Lesbian. The I'm beginning to wonder if yeah. she was, maybe. I, I was like, see, unfortunately I said lesbian there and you still carried on with your assessment of what it is to be a lesbian. It's bad enough doing the cliches of having short hair, but you said the dog. Yeah, but well, she hangs around with a dog. Do, do lesbians do that? Well, have you seen some uh, lesbians? They're right, dogs. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I've done there? You know what I've done there, Rick? Comedy oh, award God. winning. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Professional. I was having a cup of tea. 100 reasons now. On XFM 104.9, just gone half two. Ricky Gervais. Yeah, with Steve Merchant. Hi. All right. Rick, we've get, got a couple of emails in here, and they're saying they enjoyed your performance over the Christmas period on a programme called, uh, A Hundred Greatest TV Moments. Yeah. Did you do an interview or something? What was the deal? I, I didn't see this. Uh, yeah, the w Office was in there, wasn't it? And I was right. interviewed for it. 
But what are they talking about? With your, they enjoyed your performance. <laughs> Come on, tell me you what know, it is. Do you know, do No, it's the thing that I did on Razzmatazz. Oh, is uh, this where they found a clip or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, all right, I was in a band and we had one single out or something and I did one TV appearance when I was about, oh, God, and they showed a bit of it, about seven seconds, me on Razzmatazz. <laughs> oh, God. Razzmatazz, for with, those that don't remember, with, was like a kind of, I suppose, what was it, like a kind kids. of CD UK of its time? Yeah, exactly, yeah. And, uh, oh, God. And it was, it was the, of the time, sort of new romantic. And, and I, they showed a clip of this? I looked about ten and about five stone with hair and makeup and girly clothes. My sister actually said, I look like Posh Spice. <laughs> Brilliant. Which is, there's a funny story about that, right? Because we were rushed and we had to do this thing and we were, um, oh god, and we were meant to take a flight to Newcastle and Where the, were you travelling from, London? Uh, yeah. But we, we got there and we didn't have tickets, we were told to be there, but the A&R man overslept. Right, for the record company, overslept and it was terrible and we were fretting and eventually it was too late to get the plane, we missed the plane, we had to get a train and it was really kind of fine, they were back and forth going, yeah, if they come now we can still do it, we're gonna miss it and this was like a big promotional thing and we got there and they went, I, oh, <laughs> God, right? And I had this sort of like jumpsuit I was wearing that I'd cut off, put that on backwards. <laughs> a jumpsuit? Uh, yeah. Brilliant. I know, it was, Is it was bad. Is this what was in the clip? Yeah. Uh, I had that on back to front and there was no time, and I, I think I even mimed wrong at one point, and it was awful. But the funny story is this, that when <laughs> we were there, we didn't have our tickets. This was at the airport. We bumped into Buck's Fizz. <laughs> the, 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 the guys and girls from Buck's Fizz and their manager, so there's like five of them, right, and there's two of us, and they had five tickets, and this, and Buck's Fizz tried to smuggle us through. <laughs> and <laughs> so, they, so they went through the things, right, and they went, tickets please, and he just waved five tickets that he had, like that goes, this is us, right, and they went, well, can I have a look at them, and they went, there's only five here, and they went, they just looked at us and went, sorry lads, we tried. We tried, we were try. we were nearly oh. smuggled through. By Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Carol. They couldn't even, even with their powers, they were the height of their powers. that was like, was that really, that was they'd like they believe time. They'd right? already, yeah, they'd already done making your mind up. <laughs> I thought if anyone can get us through customs check, it was the fizz. But even the fizz could not get us through. What I like though, that reassures through. me, I have to say, about kind of airplane travel. You yeah. know, with these kind of troubled times, it's yeah. nice to know that even What's someone it? like Bucks Fizz yeah. couldn't get, you know, smuggle someone through. That's good, because even, you know, the t top security man went, hold on, there's five in the fizz, <laughs> there's five tickets, <laughs> those two lads are not going through. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that makes you more secure about Definitely. air travel now. Well, it's lovely if I'm in America, you know, and I see five star, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. trying to get through customs. With two other lads. Exactly, exactly, I think, wait a minute, what's going on there? Yeah. Wait a minute, security guy stopped him, it's fine. It's fine, yeah. You know there's only about five in five star. Oh. It's lovely, it's lovely to know that. Yeah. I love the fact, and did you, did you know the fizz previously? Was of this course first run in with the fizz? No, they were, they were doing, um, they were doing, uh, the Taz, same as us, they <laughs> were doing the old Raz, same and as did us. They, did you recognise the Fizz and go, oh my god, that's the Fizz, let's try and sneak in with them, or did they recognise you? How did it work? They wouldn't have recognised us. Exactly, that's what I'm thinking. Would you, I love the, the audacity of going up to Buck's Fizz and saying, try and smuggle us in. Can <laughs> <laughs> you try and break aviation law for us? Now, <laughs> yeah, now it's time to make your mind up. We're going to the land of make-believe. I did that and they laughed, they went yeah. brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. We'll get you through, lads. Yeah. Just stay tight. Um, I, I was actually uh, on top of Bobby's shoulders in a long coat. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, but Bill. Well, seriously though, I don't understand how what their plan was to. Th th like they would have gone, yep, yeah, through. <laughs> it's the fears, let them through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do don't bother checking the. It's like it not worth even asking. We couldn't even get to Newcastle. Do you yeah, think he was wearing your Newcastle? jumpsuit backwards? That sort of gave it away. Well, no, but see, I didn't have it on then. Uh, I was, I was just in service. I just had jeans and a t-shirt then. <laughs> I didn't even have my hair gelled. I was just wow. like cash. I then. saw it. I thought it looked all right. Did you? Did you? Yeah. Well, well, I mean, for. Then you. Tight jumpsuit. Nice yeah. Cheekbones. Brilliant. Yeah. 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 I had some cheekbones. Yeah. yeah. That was the, That was. If anyone difference. else saw it, or maybe they take no, it, let's, and they've let's got a clip. Because I'd love to see it. I missed it. Well, let's, I'll get you one. It's if like you have it, put it. I tell you what. Why not create a website? Um, and put that clip on there, on a constant loop, and then send the address in and I'll give it out and people can check it out for themselves. Yeah, right? brilliant. Is that okay? Yeah. Cool. I'll have to lose weight now. Yeah. That film. Oh, now we come to the feature. We've, we're carrying this over 2002 because it was such a great success. Everyone's l talking about it. I, do you remember I stopped my film reviews because I'm only doing films I like and I've done all the films I like. That's where other film reviewers fail. <laughs> sure. Because they review for substandard films. <laughs> exactly. My average is still nine and a half out of ten. Yeah. yeah. And no one's beaten that. Not Barry Norman, not Jonathan Ross. No one's got an average of nine and a half out of ten <laughs> for the cool. films they reviewed. So I'm keeping it there. 
I don't want to drop my standards. Mm. However, that film sounds good. This is where I pick a classic track from a film that I might not have seen, right? But I like the song. I might go and see the film. This is, um, Almost Famous. The film was Almost Famous. I haven't seen film. it. I haven't seen it, right? But, a song, now don't panic, listen without prejudice, this is Elton John, but it's when he was good, okay? When he was a bright, funky, young, Brit glam star, wonderful song, wonderful tune, wonderful lyrics, it's Tiny Dancer. Love Burns, Black Rebel Motorcycle Club there, Steve, what's about it? That's it, isn't it? We've it's had some laughs, haven't we? We've learned as well, we've been educated as ever. Yeah, past ears, all that, that. We've got baguette information. We've had features such as... That film sounds good. Exactly. Song, song that I like. Song for the lovers. Song for the ladies. Song for the ladies coming up very shortly. Rick, I was lucky enough this week to go to a exclusive press preview of Britney Spears' forthcoming movie, Criss Cross, or yeah. Crossroads. Crossroads, I think it's called. Yeah. Uh, it's not related to the popular TV show. Right. Rick, I sh I'm assuming you'd, you'd love me to do a little review of it now. I can't, because it's no, embargoed until March. I can only talk about it no. in March. No, I wouldn't, no. the press people will go crazy. No, I don't, I, I wouldn't want you to. Well, no. no, I imagine you want to know all about Crossroads. Not really. Because I cannot tell you anything. Well, don't then, I mean, just... Well, well you can ask me questions, you can pump me for information, I cannot tell you anything about it until March. I would pump you for no reason ever. No, but really... Certainly not for information. Carl, it doesn't matter what you ask me about Britney Spears' Crossroads, <laughs> I cannot tell you anything about it. Okay? Okay. But seriously, if you want to know the plot or what I think of it, I cannot discuss it. <laughs> okay? And if the listeners want to email in questions, they can, I cannot reply. Okay. Until March. So, hang on for that. I've seen the film already. <laughs> I've already seen the film myself. In advance of everyone else, yeah. I can't tell anyone about it. Right. Until March. That's the kind of excuse. I'll tell you what though, Go maybe on. I'll review it in March. No, you can't. Why? Because you haven't seen it and I have. <laughs> yeah. But if you want to ask me, ask me a question now about it. Well, no. actually in March. Yeah, Not but if you wanted to know now, you couldn't know, I wouldn't be able to tell you. <laughs> right. Song for the lovers. Yeah. <laughs> ladies, anyway, sorry. Song for the ladies this week. Um, I was lucky enough to, um, get given as a Christmas gift, uh, the, uh, Rolling Stones Complete Singles Collection. Good and present. I, good what present. is an absolute joy, and I was, f I'd forgotten how brilliant Wild Horses Oh, great is, track. Uh, from the Stones, so I thought I'd play that this week for the ladies. Let's leave them with that. Jagger and Richards at their best. Beautiful. <laughs> Watts is in on it. <laughs> and I don't know Watts, eh? I, I mean, Wyman was still there <laughs> those days. See you next time. Bye. We don't know. Yeah. We, we, we hide. Right the problem with me is it's like when you multiply anything with naught. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, Nothing ever happens. Yeah, mm. okay, shame. And, I, and I'm a fat little ugly fella, like, like Reg Varney. <laughs> Well, there's lots of people there that you don't like, and you sort of, you could go up to afterwards and almost like, metaphorically flip the bird. What's that mean? Last week, yeah, flip the bird. You dirty, no. Middle finger. And I, and see, I, I married Steve single. No, what are you talking about? And there are lots of people there. I thought it was a euphemism. Who you haven't got on with in the past, and then they're all being really nice to you. What am talking about? We get on with everyone, don't we? What does flip the bird mean? What does flip the bird mean? You got that lit hipster thing. The uh, finger. Give me yeah, giving the finger. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I thought there was a dirty metaphor. No. You're always thinking this. Don't bring me down to your level till at least five minutes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, coming up after the road, we've got Steve and Ricky and lovely Claire. We're driving their desk. Hello. Right, Claire. Hello. Don't bend over like that, Claire. Put a, put a longer top on or something. You're up, boys. You're, you're very studious there. We are. We're working hard on the show. Just working out what we're going to play. <laughs> <laughs> What order? I love um, the way you even live the pretense. Some, what about some Foo Fighters mixed with the strokes, Ricky? I wouldn't mind a bit of strokes or no order. What should we kick in with? Uh, undecided yet, Rick. Probably got some ads to, uh, to help us decide. That some dilemma, advertising. that dilemma will be revealed in, uh, just under four minutes. Stick around Merry for Merry Christmas, Tim. New Order and Crystal on XFM 104.9. Now listen to Ricky Gervais, obviously. With Steve Merchant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Take they like this, to know. They like to know if I'm here. They don't like to know. The fans do. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Now, that was one of my favourite singles of the year. Yeah, it's a good song. And that's what we're going to be doing in this programme. We are going to be playing some of our favourite songs from the year, Rick. That's absolutely true. We're also going to be playing some songs that maybe we don't like. Exactly. Just for the hell of it. Yeah, because we're crazy guys. Yeah. We never know what's going to happen next. No, we uh, don't. Guess we, who's pressing the buttons? We genuinely right? don't. <laughs> well, you know who's pressing the buttons. You can see her, but That's the audience don't. That's why we don't, don't know what's going to happen next. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sturgis. We've got Sturgis in. Claire Sturgis. Oh. XFM's Claire Sturgis. Yeah. 
Yeah. She stayed off it for just a day. She's yeah. not. Oh, no, no, she's, she's just. She's clean for a day. You're methadone or <laughs> what you want? No, no, I'm clean now. You're actually clean, eh? Yeah. Well done. Absolutely. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Congratulations. Well done. Yeah. For great, clean yeah. for Christmas. Oh, that's beautiful. You're still thieving, though, aren't you? Still <laughs> a thieving. Just can't lose the thieving. But at least it, the money now goes on like you know forty pence in, as opposed to a little five pound starter pack. It's lovely. Yeah. It's nice, yeah. sweet. Right. It's nice to see a little little miracle for Christmas, Rick. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I'm already in the Christmas mood. Are you in the Christmas mood? I. The thing is, though, what she's still got left over from it and the, the, these are the scars and the reminders of you to smack Ed Thieve in death. <laughs> are those little homemade tattoos on her face. Exactly. That exactly. She did with a pin. Yeah, she looks some, like Seal. And some, yeah, and some quink. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Oh, but no, Merry Christmas to you, Claire. Yeah, Merry Thank Christmas. You. Thank you, Merry Christmas. You're still living in the projects. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's one of those little she's miracles. She's still keeping it real. She's it's like wonderful. tiny Tim. I tell what, she's, she's a bit like Jesus Christ. <laughs> in a way, yeah, yeah. In a That's way. blasphemous. Please play a record, <laughs> Linkin Park and one of their songs. Gervais, quick, come on, mate. He's got, he's coming back from the kitchen with a couple of cups of tea. It's like he's won an award, he doesn't care now. I'll turn up if I want to. Maybe we should do a twin spin, Sturgis. Do you want another yeah, record? Yeah, play something, okay. play something. Uh, here you are then. Paul Weller. The changing man, the Absolutely. mod father. That's true enough. As they call him. Absolutely. See, now, you, uh, you told the listeners that I was just too big to be here because I'd won some award. Yes. I was actually making the tea for all of us, wasn't I? It's awful, this that's tea. The, that's not the point. I shouldn't be making tea, a man, in my <laughs> position. <laughs> and, yeah, You're right, you shouldn't be making tea. It's just awful. Uh, what, how do you... Well, how do you actually go about the tea? You understand how a cup of tea is made. But uh, I, I, you know, I, you've got to put a tea bag in there. No, but, uh, this is weird, right? Because I actually can't make a good cup of tea or coffee, and it's strange. It must be something metaphysical. I put all the right ingredients in, just like everyone else does, and I boil the cat and everything. But people do go that. This Can is I tell rubbish. you where you're going wrong? Go on, laziness. Why? Because you literally don't leave the tea bag in long enough. You literally dunk it in there and throw it away. I was trying to get back in time because no, I got you a show. I saw you talking with Dermot O'Diddley, so don't give me that. And I've been around to your house before. There's been times, Sturgis, when he, I've tasted the tea and it tastes like washing up liquid. And I've said, what happened? And he went, there were some bubbles in there, yeah. Well, Could I you not have rinsed out with some water for a snack? Well, don't, don't well yeah, but I, I resent having to make tea. Yeah, but don't teach me a lesson. You, like, don't offer someone a cup of tea and then think, I'll teach them a lesson. They won't be asking for tea again. <laughs> when they usually work. <laughs> but... Yeah. I've had to go and get an extra tea bag and dunk it in here. It's ludicrous. I know. It's mad, isn't it's it? It's pathetic. Anyway, but it's Christmas. Let's not, let's not disrespect let's each other. Let's not, let's no. be cheery. Yeah. Can I tell Sturgis what you got your family for Christmas last year? I just remembered <laughs> oh, when I was outside. Please, please. It was a joy. Because Gervais is a, is a generous man and he's a thoughtful man and he's got a lot of brothers and sisters and a lot of nephews and, and uh, nieces and stuff. Well, I've got and about 20 people to yeah, get Yeah, you've got a lot of So it's, you know, it's a tricky business. That's why I think, was it, you got him 200 pounds worth of lottery scratch cards. <laughs> on the, on the, on the, on the, I had about a minute. I was getting a lift down to Reading and, uh, uh, it was my mate Jimmy, and uh, I went. Hold oh, no, on, I just got to get uh, the presents, and I just well, I ran into the Seven Eleven opposite me and got a this for the scratch cards. That's amazing. <laughs> it's such a working class gippo <laughs> gift, isn't it? But did any of them work? Anyone win anything? Yeah, yeah. I mean, some people were down. That was a present. Hard luck. <laughs> that, that's the risk you take when you accept this present. Some people were up seventy pounds. But so they had a mind, great Christmas. Just bear in mind that there's like some children who are like seven or eight, you know, <laughs> scratching off scratch cards. They got to be. 18 to claim them. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and just the rest of your family sort of, I can imagine just wrestling them off. You, know, you can't claim it anyway. Uh, sure not. No, it's, have I won? No. Mm. No, you <laughs> haven't. No. I've oh, got, look, I've it's got three, three dumbbells. It's three the same. You don't get anything for that. <laughs> not in this game. <laughs> Unlucky. Are you going to do that again this year? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Mercury Rev. The Dark is Rising. That sounds like a bit like a tribute to Neil Young. Beautiful. Uh, I thought it was wonderful. It was lovely. Yeah. lovely. No, we're we're, we're going to play some lovely records oh, today. Some beautiful songs today. Steve. Steve. All right. Uh, that's true. What did you call me then? Steve. <laughs> did you call me something else before? I no. didn't hear. I thought maybe you'd, you'd no. called me, I don't know, Jonathan or something. <gasps> no, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, did, I didn't hear. I got paranoid. <laughs> um, uh, Christmas. We were talking about Christmas. Yeah. Um, <laughs> gifts. What's wrong now? <laughs> I don't know what that meant. <laughs> what? Were you having a go at me because I went on Jonathan Ross show? No, no, no. I thought you'd said something. You'd said my name by mistake. You'd said someone else's name when you were talking to me. Oh, and right. I, But I didn't hear that. So when I heard you just okay. go, Steve, I thought you were correcting a mistake you hadn't made. No. No. Exactly. No, no. Oh, okay. All right. You see? Blunder. <laughs> <laughs> what did you call me? <laughs> Fatty. <laughs> Good. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, we're talking about Christmas, yes, yeah. Yes. Well, it is Christmas, it's just isn't the it? fact that, because it's you... the right time of year to talk about it, to be honest. <laughs> it's topical. <laughs> so let's carry on. <laughs> Go on, shoot. Well, I just wondered if your Christmas uh, gift buying had always been as uh, thoughtful as it is 
<laughs> oh, well, no, that was, see, that was actually, even though it was thought pretty lazy and thoughtless, it was quite generous in a sense, yes, the financial. Sure. But I remember, oh, <laughs> oh, God. Now, even though I sort of come from a working class, work class family, and my dad was, um, you know, a labourer, and my mum was, like, housewife, but I was spoiled at Christmas. I, you know, I didn't have, like, pocket money or, or gifts and that, but, you know, she'd get out of a catalogue and pay for it for the rest of the year, so I did have great presents. Yeah. And because I had older brothers and sisters, they were earning, so I had good presents. And it was okay for me to, you know, give them nothing or do a card or something rubbish. But then, I remember one year when I just suddenly realised I was too old to be doing this. <laughs> it was like, it was like, you know, in Jaws, when it pulls focus. Yeah, and you yeah, go, oh yeah. my God. And I just realised, that's the worst present you've ever- <laughs> it was, I think it was about twelve or thirteen. And, I remember it now. My sister had got me a Cat Stevens album. Great. I think a, uh, a birdhouse, uh, and like a quiz book yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. And it was my turn to give her a present. And it was a bottle of shampoo that I'd found in the bathroom and wrapped up. <laughs> It's a big jumbo, one of those Tesco's, you know. Had it not already that, been used? No, I don't think so. Mum had bought it, like, you know. You just top, topped it up with water, wrapped it up. I just, no, I just gave it to her and she went, oh, thanks. I thought, <laughs> that's oh, outrageous. God, that's rubbish. That's really it's bad. It's rubbish, isn't it? That's really bad. I know, yeah. I remember one year, um, I really wanted a scale electrics. I was going, I want scale electrics. And my mum was going, no, you'll just get bored of it. I know what you're like. You'll get yeah. bored of it and we'll have spent all that money and you'll be bored. I was going, no, I won't. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'll play with it forever. And, I said, mm. and she was going, no, you won't. You won't. And I was going, I will. I love it. And so she bought me scale electrics and I unwrapped it. And I was using it. I was using it. I was bored instantly. Yeah. But I didn't tell her. I pretended I loved it. And she, like, I'd always be playing it monotonously, hating it. I know. But I'm loving this. Mum, it's actually brilliant. You were wrong. You were so wrong. I'm loving it. I know. I, 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 things with Sky Electrics, I, I think it was great at the time, but, yeah, um, I think it was an XFM party, actually, years ago when they got Sky Electrics and, like, loads of us think, oh, yeah, I used to love it. Rubbish. Yeah, really It's, rubbish. it's tiny. Yeah. It's about two foot long. Yeah. You're, you go, oh, put it back, put it back on, yeah. Dave. Yeah. <laughs> there you exactly. go. Oh, put it back on. Exactly. So you want it, you want it to at least kind of change into a robot. Or yeah. kind of come off and just drive around the Of course, kitchen. these days it's all virtual, Steve. <laughs> That's true isn't enough. It? In your mind. Well, we all take a pill, don't yeah, we, Rick? Yeah. And then we're in some yeah, kind of and then, uh, we're Yeah, I am, I am Hurt and Senna for a little while. And what about those bloody computer games? Oh, no one's reading the book God. anymore, are they? What's a tree? Download. <laughs> well, I'll <laughs> tell you enough. what, I'm gonna play a song now. I think I've dissed you two for about 15 mm. years, but I've got them wrong and I'm gonna play a lovely track off, um, uh, the latest album. It's the last track on the album, Ground Beneath Her Feet. It's from, uh, All You Can't Leave Behind. Beautiful and, uh, it is, well, I think it's their, one of their greatest works. Live Forever, Oasis. Still good, that one. It is very good. That's 1993, 94. It's mad, isn't it? Long time ago, eh? Crazy. Cool. All Crazy. those years ago. When they were setting out, they were great and they'd, oh. Yeah, before they became embarrassing. Well, they might, they can still they come back. They could still come back. Their, their, their last album's not as good as their, you know, their, their first one and two and, no. you know, went, but, you know, who knows, Steve? Well, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Go um, on. it's been a good gear for hip hop, Rick. Can yeah. I surprise you? Go uh, on. I've gone off hip-hop uh, of recent years, but I've, uh, I've been charmed this year by Bubba Sparks' album. I yeah. thought it was fun. Sure, 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 um, sure, I think sure. De La Soul had an album this year, which yeah, I enjoyed. Yeah, they did, That they was did, good. They did, good. They did, they did. Uh, I didn't mind the Jay-Z album. Uh, see, I liked a couple of tracks yeah, on it's that. alright on there. Yeah. I actually quite liked, there's His a new album, Outcast great. compilation that I don't know if it's out yet, or maybe it's just gonna come out I was disappointed new, by the good. album, I bought it on the street. Well, Rick, can I surprise there's a new little compilation. I like the little owl, I like the owl and the cat and the dog. The new I'm... little compilation, Go Rick, on. has lots of tracks from their previous albums and other singles, and it's a good little dynamite buy. Maybe Steve, something for the new year in the sales. Just gonna make a note of that, I'm gonna buy that on the way home. Do it. <laughs> Um, but the album that I was particularly charmed by, Princess Superstar is. Well, Now, I, a lot of people have been dismissing her as a yeah. bit of a novelty, no. uh, sort of rapper. Um, they said the same about Timmy Mallet, so don't listen to them. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> but don't listen saying. to them! That's what I'm saying. So, um, so another track we did play, we played a while back, yep. uh, Untouchable Part 2, which sure. was Dynamite. Yep. And this is another track, I think this was a single, it's called, uh, Bad Babysitter. She raps very quickly, but listen carefully, because the lyrics are fun. And slow it down a little bit, Claire. <laughs> <so, yeah. laughs> Tell us about it, Steve. From the album Princess Superstar is Princess Superstar and Bad Babysitter. Did you enjoy it, Rick? Yeah, I did. Good, good. Yeah, good. no, I, I, I like that. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. two, that's two out of two from the album I've liked. Yeah, exactly. I think I'll go and buy the album on the way home, <laughs> Do it, Steve, make another note, make note, little note. You've got Outcast to buy, which has not actually been released yet, but I'm sure you can pull some strings. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll get someone onto that. <laughs> good. <laughs> good. Okay, XFM 104.9, it's the Vicky Gervais Show. Absolutely. Can I stop you there? Go on. With Steve Merchant. Thanks very much. No, no worries, yeah. Cheers. <laughs> uh, we're talking about presents here, I just remembered something else I had. Um, uh, I was, I was just into science from, like, the age of, like, five, six to about, um, uh, so 18, 19. I'm still into it, but, um, I studied it and I absolutely loved it. And I got a microscope set when I was about, I suppose, 
ten mm -hmm. or eleven, and uh, just looking at butterfly wings and just anything under there, like you know, three hundred times. Thought this is amazing, right? And in it came these little shrimp eggs, and uh, you could look at them, and then you could sort of you could breed them. You had to put them in a salt water solution, and then keep them at a certain temperature, and they think, oh, and a nice little beach, and they'd come out. Yeah. What I did speed up the process a little bit. <laughs> Popped it on the electric fire, <laughs> right? On the, uh, we had a fake, one of those fake plastic coal things with one of those little metal things that turned round from the heat and made it look like flames. It right. didn't. <laughs> no. I'll be honest, <laughs> it didn't. Because <laughs> who the hell was fooled? Yeah. Was coming in going, you got a lovely roaring <laughs> fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The flames were encased behind that plastic coal. <laughs> exactly. But I love it. Popped them on there, left them there for a little while. Bit too hot. <laughs> Came back. Mm, just melted, <laughs> really. <laughs> just dry, and the thing was sort of slightly warped. So, them shrimps did not see the light of day. <laughs> Once again, your laziness and sinfulness yeah. just, I've got uh, to speed up the experiment. Absolutely. Come on. I, I can advance nature. Yeah, come exactly. Come on. Yeah. Uh, uh, Do you um, stand in front of a microwave just going, come, come on, on. Come on. Yeah. A minute oh. and a half for soup. It's ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That's so, majestic. Uh, yeah, but I learned my lesson. <laughs> yeah. Now yeah. I, 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 Make sure the shrimps are the right temperature. Exactly. That's terrible. You reminded me of something I was going to say then, but I can't remember. I've embarrassed myself live on air. Yeah. Should have kept that quiet. No one was there. No one was there thinking. I wish Steve would say something. Now it's crazy. What was Steve going to say? Story. Yeah. I know what it was. It was what you said about the um about the sort of the fire and that that idea of kind of buying a piece. It's like when people buy a fake Rolex watch. Yeah. And they they tell people it's fake. Utter waste of time. Yeah. Why are you told me that it's like wh what you're not. You're, I'm getting one over on the Rolex people. But uh, it, it, you're you're right on that side. But the point is, why buy a fake Rolex watch? I mean, why buy a Rolex watch? I think well, they look good. Delicious. They look nice. Yeah. yeah. And it's a, but it's a transparent display of wealth. But it's when there's like a builder who you know's on like five pound an hour wearing a Rolex. You're joking, aren't you, Steve? <laughs> Pod carriers can get upward of five hundred and fifty pounds a day. <laughs> so you've embarrassed yourself. <laughs> I don't know anything. It seems like I don't know anything about the building industry anymore. <laughs> 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 Unbelievable. Oh, no, Do you know once I my friend showed off this watch that he bought, um and he, a guy had sort of dodgy bloke had sold it to him on the street. Yeah. Uh, and he'd been up in London and some guy on Oxford Street had sold him this watch and it looked really good and it worked fine for years and it and, he, and it just looked class and I thought, wow, that's brilliant. And I came to London for something and I walked walked up and down Oxford Street for two and a half hours trying to get sold a dodgy watch. And I'd be going up to people like selling lighters, going, Yeah, not interested in lighters. Got any uh, watches? Yeah. And go, no, I haven't got any watches. Go down to yeah. the perfume guy and I go down to the perfume bloke, you any watches? <laughs> I love the idea that they saw you go, nah, like, watch, and they go, no. <laughs> I know. Why? It's a bad advertisement, mate. If people <laughs> yeah. see you walking around with this, it's not good for trade. What? How dare you? <laughs> Send me one of those stolen watches. <laughs> Can't do it, mate. More than my job's <laughs> worth. Ten Benson. Bla that's a gr Black Snow. That's a great tune. Good song, I, lo isn't it? I love it. Uh, it's sort of like punky, but it's got more in common with stuff like Steppenwolf and My bad only worry companies. is that, um, so are they like back? sort of 18 year olds who, like Gomez, are trying to sound like they've kind of had a rough, hard no, living life? No, no. They are old, 40 somethings. Well, no, no, they're not. They sort of, but they're, they're dirty. Yeah, good, yeah. good. Do you notice that, uh, Steve Taylor, the man with the knowledge, just yeah. popped in there yeah, to bid us Merry it. Christmas? Yeah. And I noticed, Claire, you said something like, uh, has he got another kid, did you say? Y yeah. How many yeah. children has he got? I think he's got the two now, yeah. He clearly, he has got the knowledge, hasn't he, in every sense. Yeah. I imagine he's a great lover. Hey, well, he knows. I imagine he's got wonderful fingers. He knows what but magic fingers. Well, he's actually got little little um, toady hands. Right, <laughs> he's he uses a lot of utensils. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. He's got he's invented all these little things that go <laughs> with <laughs> one, <laughs> and it just yeah. it's over very quickly, yeah. so we can get on with learning. <laughs> Pleasure it, gloves. Yeah, because even when he's making love, there's a stack of trivia books. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So well, he can tell you about kind of great shags of the past. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, he's, he's there. Here he comes. Yeah, here he comes. Oh, look, I love him. Because you don't know this, listeners, but he looks like Penfold. Oh, he, does, he, does, he, does, he does. He does. He hasn't stopped him breeding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. You, don't, you, you usually call it, the you man usually call it breeding when it's humans. <laughs> But, Steve um, Taylor, the man with the knowledge. Come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Hey. Merry All right. Christmas to you. It's like Steve Wright in his posse. All right. Merry yeah. Christmas. Hi. 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 Are you a great ladies' man? Are you a great ladies' man? Were you a great ladies' man before you were married? It's not something I talk about. I'm married now. Because, right, because he's sort of like got a little shaved head and he's got a beard and it's exactly the same colour, sort of, sort of ginger hair. He looks like a tennis ball. <laughs> it's just <laughs> hair, the exact the same length, when all over his in, face. There's no head. reason for me to come in, was that abuse was happening without me here. Yeah, I know. And now I've come in, you just continue. But it. say hello, so it's with your blessing him. I think we're nice. Say Merry Christmas. Hi, Merry Christmas, all the listeners. See you, well, you're on at five o'clock, aren't you? Uh, 
Yeah. Right, I'm going to make a note of that. When I've bought those yeah. two albums, I'm going to listen to Steve Taylor, The Man With The Lodge, on at five o'clock on XFM. Yeah, isn't it incredible? Because he's been in since eleven o'clock this morning, just Studying. compiling information for every record he'll be playing. Yeah. The show's only twenty minutes long. But you know, with him, it's because he's got to uh, offload it. Yeah. He, he's mm. got to talk about it all the time, because it's, it's only, you know, he's got a huge brain, and it's mm. warm, it's going warm, yeah. all yeah. Um, information. What, what are you playing next, uh, you bored? Star Sorry, yeah. will, will yeah, we boring you, you two? Oh, it's just that list, isn't that cute? Yeah. So can yeah. you tell us about, uh, Star Slater? What do you know about some interesting facts about Star Slater? Into the microphone. Into the micropole that goes down <laughs> the loudie box and out to the radiograph in the homes all around England. <laughs> <laughs> They're rubbish. Thank you. Steve Taylor. Controversial view. Lovely. Still, he has bred people. <laughs> hives. Hives. For that Star Sailor. It's been a bit of a punk sort of show this, isn't it? Yeah, so in general, in, in year, uh, you know, the whole year's been a little bit of a, I blame the strokes, but, you see, I, I, I enjoyed punk. You were too young and don't care for it, but. But I have to say that if, if, if punk the first time round was as exciting as I found it this year, then I, I, I've missed out because I've really enjoyed it. Really. So yeah. I, I want to go home and play you all, all, all things like, um, X-ray specs mm, and, you mm. know, things like that now. Are they as kind of melodic though as, as things like the strokes and, um, and, uh, white stripes and so on? Are they kind of tuneful? Well, the, the, the white stripes. In fact, I've picked them a very bad example because they were sort of like pop punk and polished was almost, it, she wasn't a, it wasn't a joke, but, um, they had saxophones and stuff, so right. it's just not, it's probably a bad example of early. Mm, mm. I mean, just, I mean, the Sex Pistols summed it all up. Yeah, know. sure, sure. But, uh, well, we, we we enjoyed that, don't we? No, we did, we did. I, I have to say, though, although there has been a nice bit of sort of punky uh, sound this year, for me it's been very much a year for the geeks. And I, you'd have thought I'd have enjoyed well, that, Well, that's but new actually, metal, though, isn't it? Well, it is the new metal. There's all these people who are in their bedroom playing sort of computer games I and loving Limp I can't believe the new metal has taken over the world. It's, it's just mad, incredible. isn't it? It's absolutely huge. Suddenly, Link, Linkin Park and... But, uh, see, I don't mind things like, you know, Marilyn Manson, because they're, you know, they're having a go, they're having a bit of a laugh, and, you know, but I, I just... But it always so seemed so perennially uncool to me when I was younger. Any who was into that kind of music, I just thought, loser. And that's, I mean, that's and coming the from the calling the pop black. Yeah, imagine that. But it's, it's a year of the geeks, not just because of new metal, but also because of just these fantasy films with the Harry Potter oh, stuff no. and now Lord of the Rings. It's like everyone's obsessed. Now it's cool to play stuff. Dungeons and Dragons. I know I can't get over it. I'm stunned. It's scary, isn't it? Because Eve, I was never into that rubbish. No, I've always thought it's, not. it's like, yeah. It's like people who are still obsessed with Harry Potter, they go, I'm rereading Harry Potter for the third time. And I think, listen, I haven't read it, okay, I'm sure it's very good, but you're rereading it for the third time. There are books out there, written by adults for adults, yeah. with like sex and other exciting things. Yeah. And it's Harry Potter, oh yeah, yeah, I'll just read, like in case you miss something the first time. Right? But maybe they're learning the spells. <laughs> I just, I'm stunned by it. I mean, I, I, have you read it all, Claire? Are you all up on this? What, Harry, Harry Potter? Potter I North actually went out and bought the first Harry Potter book and lost interest halfway through because there was no sex in it. No, so exactly. Couldn't be it's bothered. like why I never go to see uh, any Disney films. There's never the prospect of any nudity. If right. that's, if there's no chance of nudity. See, I think you're buying, I think you're actually buying the wrong books. Right. What you want to buy, Steve, is a pornographic magazine. Tell me more. Well, in there, you see, what you get. Ladies. <laughs> Other ladies, sometimes ladies. Nudie ladies. Sometimes ladies. <laughs> Stereophonics. And the theme tune to BBC <laughs> Two's The Office, Handbags and Glad Bags. Absolutely. Um, so I think we should be playing Christmas songs as well, though. Because uh, America's War is over. Like a great, great. Is it really? What? The theme tune to The Office. I think you meant, is, yeah, I think you meant, is war really over? <laughs> it yeah. is. Thanks, John. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah, it is, yeah. That's, well, we're, there, to be fair, Rod Stewart did it first. <laughs> yeah. And we don't use the stereophonics version. Oh, no. Right, or okay. the Rod Stewart version. Thank no. you. Too expensive. Exactly. Cost a fortune. We had to re record it. Yep. A little known facts. Yeah. You yeah. should save that for the DVD. Or S Steve Taylor would have blown it anyway. Yeah, exactly. Wouldn't he? To come on with the knowledge and told yeah. him everything. I was thinking Fairy actually- Fairytown, New York. A beautiful song. Can, we, can song. we find It'd that? It'd be nice to dig it. I'm sure everyone's playing it at the moment. Yeah, that's where, yeah. Let's but I mean, we it. should, it's good. No, it's Let's great. play Simply Having a Wonderful Christmas Time by Paul McCartney. Can we McCartney. play, uh, Driving Home for Christmas, Chris Rea? Oh, he is. Oh. Hey, get, oh, there's a lyric in that that goes, uh, I look at, he's in, in the car driving Christmas, and he looks over the other bloke in the other car, he goes, he's just the same as me. Yeah, I was thinking that. Like, yeah, he's just the same great. as me. Do all yeah. for Christmas. Is he saying he's copied him? He's like, oi, <laughs> yeah. you yeah. why are you wearing, that's the same as me, that is. What's he get your missus? The same, yeah. is it? Are you? Who are, are you a stalker? <laughs> I'm Chris Rea. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. He's going up to Newcastle. Exactly. Oh, they talk, innit? Is that where he's from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it no, Middlesbrough or Newcastle or... Do you remember when Rhea made a Cleveland? film? Go on. Chris Rhea made a film. They all do it, like, Dave Stewart made that film with the All Saints, Honest. Yeah. No one went to see it. No. But Chris Rhea made a film, which was like a kind of fantasy thing. Well, I think Shirley Bassey turned up in it, where he was like, have you ever seen this? No, but, oh, oh, no, I can't tell it's it. I'll tell you off air. 
Really? Is it outrageous? Is it Chris? Is it libelous to Chris no, Rear? No, no. I had to interview Chris Rear about this. Really? And Shirley Bassey was there, and, and she and she pulled up in her really limo. Yeah. So I don't, don't ask me. Don't ask me. What were you doing for? It was for some satellite. And TV what did Bassey show. say? Did she, did she disrespect Bassey? the team? No, no. When Bassey came into Pinewood <laughs> Studios, <laughs> when she came in, we all had to leave the set so she could drive through the set. We all had to leave so she could oh. drive in. Mm-hmm. No. Just thought I'd tell you that. Oh. It's very boring. Really. I wish I hadn't told you that. What do you mean she too. drove her car? In into the set. No, she was driven into Pinewood right. Studios, right. into wherever they were filming, and we had to all leave well, as she arrived. Leave? Because, I don't know. Did just, she know what you do? She Sturgis. didn't like me. Went, yeah. I don't want that smack head out <laughs> in here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I got some valuables in here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sturgis. Diamonds yeah. are forever, especially when she's around. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I never saw the film, Steve, in answer to your questions. Yeah, well, I don't think anyone did, but uh, the fact that Chris Rea got money to make a film. I mean, has he released a song for years? He's still going. He's he? probably got a little bit of back catalogue going. You mentioned Paul McCartney as well. We were talking about that with Steve Taylor. And I'm wondering, because you're talking about his money and the fact he's got loads of wealth, and that's fair enough and he obviously deserves it. But mm. what I'm wondering is, Eve's got to be su- he's such Steve, a rich does man. anyone deserve it? <laughs> <laughs> Unless they spread it around. Really. Politics, <laughs> politics. But, um, he's yeah. obviously, I mean, he must be one of the richest men, in, certainly in this country, and I'm yeah. sure, you know, internationally. Millions. Yeah. I don't know if he's reached the billion mark yet. But I'm wondering to myself, why doesn't he spend some of that money making his missus like a bionic leg? That'd be amazing. Oh, Do you know what I mean? God. She could like leap over buildings and stuff. That'd be genius. Well, she wouldn't leap. She'd hop. Because if I had that much money, I would. She could only hop. She'd, but she'd just be running around in a circle. She'd, she'd win. The one. She'd you'd win to get the, the other one done Sports as well. games, wouldn't she? It's go easy. Just yeah. one hop. <laughs> exactly. And she's won. I mean, it'd oh. just be incredible. Because I don't know. I mean, the Barnet Man. It was. Uh, it was expensive then, wasn't it? Six million then, Steve. <laughs> uh, Christ knows what it would cost now <laughs> with inflation. Six million dollars, of course. <laughs> that's only about um, four million pounds <laughs> yeah. sterling. Yeah. But now, and that was like what was that, seventy four or something? That's co- it. Cost you a fortune. Hundreds of million. Oh, million. I wouldn't even want to guesstimate. But he's got. He got the. He got the eye. Sure. That's useful. Yeah. He can well see miles away. Yeah. Um, he's got the two legs. You need the two legs for running. Did he have the two legs? Wouldn't it be? Yeah, of course he did. Otherwise, he'd be hopping. Wouldn't he? Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> but uh, he got the one arm. He needed the one arm. They thought, let's not look mad. Let's not make a feet bionic. <laughs> yeah. But the one thing that I, w- always worried me, right, was that when he lifted up a truck with his one good arm, why didn't his back collapse? Yeah. Yeah. He didn't have a bionic spine, did he? Sure. I sure. could see. I could see him lying on the ground and sort of like doing a sort of leg press. That'll be fine. But when he stand up, his leg, his back would just collapse, wouldn't it? Yeah. So you're beginning to wonder if an astronaut <laughs> who fell out of a he- uh, an airplane while test driving it and was rebuilt <laughs> as a half robot, you're wondering if there's maybe some flaws in that. Uh, yeah. In that concept. yeah. And Oscar oh. Goldman, I don't know what. And isn't it convenient that his girlfriend had the same two legs, one arm? I think that's this, what drew them close this, together. There is. This time she had the ear. I don't think he was just on the pull and by chance he got her undressed. He thought, my God, that does that looks like a familiar plastic arm. And there was a bionic dog, wasn't there? And a horse, apparently. Well, why do you need a bionic horse? I know. When you can run at 70 miles an hour, you don't really need to get on a horse, do yeah. you? <laughs> Unless the bloke had the bionic horse wasn't bionic, and he could run, like, really well, I fast. think the problem was that they'd spent so much money on all these bionic things, they just made a bionic horse, entered it in races. Yeah, he's getting all their money back. Yeah, exactly. Steve Austin, he's not, he's not <laughs> turning <laughs> up, he's swanning round. Very, a very costly investment. Does anyone remember Barnick Man? Is this just, yeah? This, it's all shown again, isn't it? On Bravo. Everyone knows you the Barnick Man. Oh, just so ask Camfield about it. Oh, I yeah. bet he loves it. Because Camfield's it? only about 14 and he knows the Barnick it, Man. I know, yeah. He's yeah. been watching it for 13 and a half years. Sturge, um, let's play another song because it, we just played the cover version of uh, Handbags and Narrow. It's sure. a great song. Really good. Yeah. And, uh, I've been playing cover version. versions all this year. Mm. And, uh, one of my favourites was this Run one I played. Cover. I played a long time back. Actually, I think this, I played this when we were standing in for Dermot O'Diddley. Yeah. Not he was back today, wasn't he? Just pops up when he wants. Exactly. And he? But, um, I'm not gonna play any cover versions in the new year. That's Go on. That cover me up or well, cover me bad. That's cover me, I, Run for cover. Well, I've, I've finished with my, um, f- oh, I, I call it film review. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. So yeah. we're gonna have all new features in the new year. Yeah. But, uh, this is, I'd love to play this again. This is a Once Around the Block, as done by the Kings of Convenience. Play this, Claire. Lovely. Mm. Mm. Was, uh, I think, a short-lived, um, kind of, uh, new folk movement, wasn't there, this year, that kind of came and went. And the Kings of the Convenience were supposed to be part of that. And their album, uh, Quiet is the New Loud, I thought was an absolute treat. And a lot people just sort of ignored it. Lovely, lovely track, but lovely uh, version. That was never actually on the album, that was from the Toxic Girl uh, single, and that's Once Around the Block by Badly Drawn Boy, as done by the Kings of Convenience. Beautiful. This is great, isn't it, coming in and just like playing songs? Oh man, it's a, it's a lovely, lovely Do job. Do you think the listeners enjoy this as much as we do? I would imagine not. No, I don't think no. so either. No. But does that make us bad people? No, I don't think it no. does. It makes us wealthy people. And lucky, very lucky. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> PJ Harvey. Lovely. Love it, great. Great, I'm loving this, Steve. Yeah, no, it's Nearly great. Christmas. I had a couple of chocolates there, didn't I? Oh, the yeah. The purple ones in roses. Mm, very mm, much mm. like the Quality Street one, the hazelnut and the toffee. Yeah.
But get Ooh. me in the mood. Now, I know if you're a fan like me, uh, you love the roast dinner. Oh. We love the roast dinner. But the uber roast dinner is the Christmas dinner. <laughs> Forward to no, it. I'm thinking about it now. I can't believe how many different sort of meats you're gonna have in your house. Well, we always have the turkey, obviously. Yeah. Plus, we always yeah, have yeah, a little yeah. bit of pork, a little bit of lamb. Oh God! And the, don't don't forget the sausage. You know. Well, I love the fact that someone's designed the turkey uh, Christmas dinner, and then they thought, wait a minute, I also want a little sausage, and ah, let's wrap it in bacon. Why not? Let's, let's have, have some stuff. Can we well. have some? Can we have all the meats that are available? Someone said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's sausage meat in the stuffing. Now, and well, sue me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> sue me if I want a bit of extra sausage. <laughs> You know what I mean? Oh. It's the it's the greatest it's, it's the work of art, and it takes it's hours. Genius. Rick, can I ask you what kind of Go veg on. you going uh, with this year? Veg? Well, I, I just love the roast potato. I mean, people have tried to sneak in the Brussels because you don't eat vegetables or anything. No, I try green, not to eat parsnips. I love parsnips, but when they're crisp and crunchy, like a like a like a trendy crisp yes. in a wine bar, <laughs> I love yes. it when you know, yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that. Uh, can I? Uh, we'll be having carrots. We'll be having leeks. We'll be having <laughs> Brussels, obviously. <laughs> yeah, uh, Brussels. Yeah. Um, and there's all, we'll all, my mum will always throw in a little bit of something crazy. Maybe there'll be a little bit of red cabbage, something or, wild, or, or, something or exotic, or, something them, or a used condom. To be quite honest, I think she's mental, your mother. <laughs> yeah, uh, she's got to uh, stop that. But who knows? Any kind <laughs> of, uh, any kind of treats. I'm looking for, I'm just so, and I love the fact about the Christmas dinner is it people are taking weeks, years planning it. I know. They take, yeah. you know, they could, months, gonna dig up the frost. <laughs> Have you told? Could you talk about your your grandparents? Well, my grandparents, of course. The thing about my grandparents, I have <laughs> mentioned this before. Yeah, I don't. Think I love this. I think they've got about three teeth between them. It's unbelievable. They, they, my grandfather. They're all had, their own, though. He was in the RAF in the war, <laughs> right? And he, for some reason, he, he had problems with his teeth, and they pulled them all out oh, and they really? replaced them with um with a, a false set of false teeth. But during the wartime, I don't know whether this was just like what it was like during the war or just the forties. But he had a kind of wooden plate put in with like some kind of fake teeth attached. Oh no. Um and he's never had that changed. So you know he's still got the wooden plate and about three teeth still hanging on it. Oh. It's just a, so he and my grandmother combined, they cannot eat anything that's kind of solid. So they will literally get up for Christmas dinner, they'll get up and they'll put the meat on like it's sort of six in the morning. Go back to bed for the day, get up and eat it about nine o'clock at night. And they and the best compliment you can have if you've cooked dinner for my grandparents is, Oh, this is lovely. You can suck it away. Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine why do they just li so liquidise it? Have a nice little roast they smoothie. They have done in the past. Really, and, and a little apple crumble smoothie. If to we follow. take them out to, f if we take them out to eat, uh, like at a restaurant, or something, we've got to phone ahead to make sure there's fish on the menu. Really? Because they can only have fish. But then the bones, you see, that's a problem for them. We well, can take the bones out of fish, can't you, and sort of mash it up? Yeah, but the eyes are going. Steve, as well. could I suggest the fish cake? <laughs> it's already mashed. It's with the potato. It's in a crispy crumb, which doesn't hurt anyone, whether you got teeth or not. Rick, can I um, go on? Make a little. Yeah. I just want to make it because obviously yeah. not everyone's as fortunate at Christmas. Rick, no. Us. What about, about the vegetarians? <laughs> <laughs> what are they eating? A nut cutlet. <laughs> what the hell a is lovely a nut little nut cutlet. cutlet. Can't they have like tofu, but but in the shape of a turkey? But I love the fact that so often, you know, certainly your Linda McCartney veggie items, they always try to fool you into thinking it's the real thing. You know, some veggie sausages that they've injected with something so they'll taste like sausages. Yeah. We Eat the like, real thing. I know you don't really need it, that arbitrary shape. If it's, but you might as well just have any shape. What angers me with the you vegetarians, any shape, really? you? What angers me with the vegetarians and the vegans, even worse, is that, look, we're breeding all these animals to be eaten. Yeah. They're gonna get slaughtered anyway. Chow down! Come yeah. on! Yeah. Those chickens in those little kind of pens, you know, four of them in a little square box. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're crapping eggs out every couple of minutes. Yeah. You're they're not, eaten. you're not a zoologist, are you? I am not officially. Yeah. No, but I know what I'm talking about, really. Yeah, you I'm, do. I've, I've seen brochures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. walked past a farm while on holiday. Excuse me, farmer, could, um, your finest hens crap me some eggs <laughs> for my tea? <laughs> no chick, worries. Chick, 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 chicken, <laughs> crap a little egg, egg for me. Oh, Brilliant. old Christmas class. Oh. I, no, spare a thought for the vegetarians and worse still the vegans. Yeah, and, uh, what about Travis? What do you think they'll be doing this Christmas? I'm no whale of a time. I'll tell you what, Steve, it was an excuse to play the record. Genius. It was a link. Travis. And Driftwood on XFM 104.9. It's the Christmas edition of the Ricky Gervais Show with Steve Merchant. Hi. I'm loving it. Yeah, it's good. I'm in the Christmas spirit, actually, I have to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I do enjoy it. I do enjoy it. Will you be looking forward to, uh, I know everyone talks about it, Rick, but Christmas telly? I love Christmas telly. Uh, uh, Christmas Day telly's great. I'd get up and, and Noel's giving out some presents around hospitals and that, and then you might have a, the, 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 
uh, number ones of the year mm, mm. from um, uh, top of the pop. Then you might have a little. I don't know. I don't watch the Queen's speech, but you know, you, you have a little sleep then, don't yeah, you? Maybe exactly. after a big yeah. roast dinner with uh, too many sausages. Yeah. I'm only joking, Mum. Let's have some more. <laughs> <It's true enough>. <laughs> <laughs> more <laughs> chocolate, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's not. You know, there's, there's like people starving in the world, so let's not rub it in. Hopefully, they're not listening to the radio. No, probably not. Just scrabbling around in the cold and the dirt, <laughs> looking for food. <laughs> 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 we are actually laughing about it. Know, we actually, yeah. we actually laugh. Rick, about I find that if I laugh about it, then I can ignore the problem easier. Yeah, <laughs> not face that, up to the horror. Yeah, I know that that that's too easily done, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> exactly. It's too easy to face the horror of the world. It's better to laugh it off. I know. That's what annoys me about buskers. Because mm. a beggar just sits there and you can pretend you haven't seen him. Exactly. Whereas a busker's shouting out. Yeah, and you want to go. He know, you know, unless you're deaf and blind, mm. he knows. Yeah. He knows. Yeah. 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 So have you anyway. cultivated a kind of universal? I've got cultivate this kind of thing I always do with a beggar. When they offer their hand, I just, I don't even say anything anymore. I just sort of kind of offer up my hands as though to say, look, I have no money in my yeah. hands. And yeah. just a kind of, a kind of sympathetic turn of the head. And I yeah. sort of mouth some words like, and it normally involves sorry mate or something. Yeah. Because uh, well, I find it's better to be courteous than like kick them in the head or anything like that. Yeah, no, yeah. I never do that. And I, and I always acknowledge them. I never, I actually never ignore them. No. And, and sometimes I give depending on, or, uh, Although yes, I have to it's say, all, another, it's situation, another it? successful I, year for me of avoiding the big issue salesman. I've never bought a copy of the big issue. I love the fact you are actually proud of that. Well, it's, it got to the point where, it, where I, I actually am appalled by myself, but it's like it's a contest now. It's like I've managed to do it for so long that it's like, it's almost a competition with myself. Well, it's the same as me with reading a novel. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Although I blew that in 1987 when I read Catcher in the Rye. <laughs> I'm still kicking myself. I, uh, I'm looking forward, of course, to, I'm hoping it'll be Dennis Norden's Laughter File, Volume 7. Oh, seven, you're having a laugh. 27? It, it used to be it'll be right on the night, but I think they've changed the name for Dennis Norden's Laughter well, File. Well, it, it's great, though, isn't it? Because he comes... You're one of those people. <laughs> and it, one of those because people. This is something we call <laughs> doorstop. <laughs> yeah. And it's sort of like, just, what? Yeah. And it's, yeah. doesn't he just go into the director this general? This is one called Let Sleeping Logs Die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, oh God. But what I don't understand is why people, why no one has said to him, or why hasn't he watched that TV? Why isn't he, at Christmas, right, he's gone home with the family, he's watched, he's gone, come on everyone, let's watch my show, and he's watched it. It's and an after file, 27. Yeah, that's that's, and I, that's The family must have been faking laughter, and why is he not turning around? Why did no one tell me? Yeah. Crap! Why doesn't he go to Greg Dyke and go or whatever it's on? Well, like, it's ITV, isn't it? Yeah. Well, is it? Oh, who's that ITV then? Task, it's who's it's I don't know. But go to go. Just watched uh, me on that Laughter File Twenty Seven. It's rubbish, isn't it? And they go, yeah. They go, well, why didn't you tell us? That? Well, we thought we thought it would kill you, to be quite honest. But why didn't you let my son take over or something? Well, Dennis, he's he's eighty four. <laughs> How old am I then? Well, we don't know. <laughs> we, we've had you carbon dated, but it's off the scale. <laughs> but why do you let me carry that stupid file? Are you reading this now, Dennis? Well, I, I can't have, remember yeah. what I got to say. Well, don't, don't read it. Just, just speak normally. Two coffees, please, waiter. No, no, no this mean. is what we call talking to the director general. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> but I can't wait for that, yeah. And, uh, Dennis oh, there is two, two, um, Can I just say, one? who's in the audience of Dennis Lawrence? <laughs> like, who's, who's, go who's gone, Joan, I got two tickets for a laughter file, I can't believe yeah, my I've been on the internet. Because they always laugh, they're cracking up the people on that show. I've never laughed once. Maybe anymore. it was an audience that they filmed in 1973, mm. but it was the first time they saw a goalkeeper get hit in the balls yeah. or something, or Jackie Charlton or something, or, <laughs> exactly. or, or a dog fall off a slide. Well, it's people it's either old people who just can't remember, they've already seen those clips a thousand times before. Or yeah. Time, or yeah. it's, um, I was always thinking of the, the people that, um, what's that show, uh, that, that um, Beatle used to do? The, um, Beatle's Framed. You've been framed. I think now what's happening is while Lisa Riley's doing all the scripted jokes, there's just someone stood behind her, maybe just showing a picture of her, like nude or in yeah. a bikini, or just pointing and just making jokes at her expense. Exactly. That's yeah. why they're laughing. He's lovely, Lisa Riley, oh, off uh, Emmerdale, good of course. Old fatty Riley. No, no, it's, it's not fat. It might be glad you don't know. <laughs> it could be glad. No, just stop it. <laughs> You can't say I that. I don't know, I've gone a bit crazy. I've just gone No, gone no, but she, she, what if she's listened to this and she gets an eating disorder or something, yeah. or, just you know, nice. becomes bulimic, because of what you, she's probably at home binging now. I know. She's leaving out the vomit and she can't get her fat fingers <laughs> in her mouth. <laughs> Anyway, I tell you what, the best gig of the year, surely the White Stripes, Rick. I know everyone's raving about it. Let's hear one of their tracks. What's it called again, Claire? Fell in love with a girl. Lovely. <laughs> Folks, Kirsty McCall, Fairytale, New, New York. We're just saying, it's, 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 it's just a brilliant song, isn't it's it? It's genius. It's, it's genius. Great. And what I love is the fact that it was quite a big hit. And it's like sometimes even a majestic song like that, that normally would get overlooked, just manages to drift up to the surface somehow. And even, you know, everyone, the, the white trash. Well, the the, the, the imagery is. 
great as well. It's brilliant. How can old slut on junk be romantic? Amazing. Well, we're fans. Yeah. Sturgis thought he was talking about her. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it, Sturgis. You know, You're clean. Way we are. Know You're way clean way. now. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got we got more treats. Um, we've after got this, uh, we've got a song, a song for the ladies. The ladies. We're, yeah, we're going out of um, uh, sync here. We're going to play song for the ladies, the penultimate track, because yeah. I want to leave them with a Christmas classic, the Joni Mitchell classic, uh, uh, River. So look forward to that. Absolutely. Well, well, it's been a great show. It has. Even, even though I say so myself. Yeah, yeah, you know, I've enjoyed it. Looking back over the year. Rick, looking forward just, to Christmas. Go on. Can I just throw a thanks, a big thanks out to all the people that have emailed us and phoned in and written to us over and the last six things. months. I think yeah. it's about four people who keep doing it. Yeah. Recycling the same Under different names though. Exactly. But we don't, we don't tend to read stuff out, but, uh, it is appreciated. It is. And it's often gets into the show whether you know it or not. Exactly. In some way we steal off, steal your joke and pass them off as our own. No, nice email from someone there saying there is a tofurkey? A tofurkey, yeah. It's a tofu turkey. Yeah. You can buy it in the whole trimmings. All See, trimmings. Uh, and yeah. I, I made that up. Mm. I could have written that down and, well, it had already been done. Yeah. So I said we can't paint in a tofurkey. Sure. sure. So I've embarrassed myself again. Sturgis, are you going to be driving home for Christmas? No, I'm, I'm going to be here. Christmas. I'm going to be here. God, she's working. He's yeah. just the same as me. <laughs> She's working on Christmas, too. Oh, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Someone emailed me the other week saying, will I be voice tracked over what Christmas? Does that mean? Well, I d I'm not quite sure. It's a radio term, apparently. Right, but right. now I, I will be live. Wow. On Christmas Day? Oh, yes. Christmas Day. Evening. So you can't drink and stuff? Well, well not, not, well, not as no. much as like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you no. would have liked. I mean, I you're always drunk on there, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. But it's getting to that point. I didn't know she drank till I saw her sober one day, one yeah. Sunday morning when she came in to do an early show, and mm. she was talking differently. Yeah. She went, I, the pub's not open yet. Exactly. <laughs> and I uh, realised. <laughs> it's terrible, isn't it? Mm. Well, what should we play now, I don't know, I've kind of felt like we've sort of exhausted ourselves, really. We've run out of stuff to say. Have we've we? Passed, we've made all our observations about Christmas. Yeah. We've taken a sideways glance <laughs> at the <laughs> sausage. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I don't right, know funny this year's Stuffing. Christmas. Remember we talked about stuff? Do you remember the, it was, I think it was four links ago. Yeah, sure. No, no, listen. Do you, we're gonna call it <laughs> sausage loving. <laughs> and we talked about all the different things you have on a plate and that. And we started off with like turkey and then Listen, we went, I'm just trying to remember some of the uh, amusing bloopers that took place uh, over the course of the show. Uh, remember when you didn't make it back in time for the link and you were making tea? <laughs> I was making tea! Oh classic. god! What was that one when, um, I think you said something like, um, uh, that was a right stri white stripes. <laughs> he's he's exactly. gonna say the word wrong yeah. or something. Like. Yeah. Oh, oh god. If you're one of those people. Oh, this is great. I'll tell you what, I'd like to play a record because I'd like to talk about this link later. Yeah. Should we play a record? Yeah, well, let's look back on it, like, you know, amusingly, like I Love 1980. Oh, Let's do that God. in a second. So, uh, I'll play a, a song for the ladies, final one of the year, and it's a song which I did play a long time ago, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's from uh, Nick Cave's album, uh, what was it called again? I think it was called No More Shall We Part, and it's an absolutely magnificent I'm, I'm track. just remembering the last time you played it. <laughs> I know. It was brilliant, because you, you introduced it, oh. and then... Um, I think it was Carl Press who button. played it, and we listened to it. Were we, were we playing Buckaroo <laughs> or eating Curly Wurlies at the time? I can't remember. <laughs> I was on a space oh. opera. Who realised that, that if he sits there, it gets stuck because it looked like it's a cute little chip.